pinky shade and then come in and smudge it. I'm actually pretty happy with that. It's unusual. Day eight of Junk Journal January is florals. Still working on the Dolce Vita journal using the prompts. For florals, I've got this paper. Is that? That's the right way up. Okay. Would help if I knew the right way up. I've also thought I will do a corner pocket with a tag again made from junk and just covered with some book page at the moment. Floral wise we've also got our 1950s woman that I fussy cut out the way I described in the last video by cutting through bits of the body to get to those bits rather than poke a hole and cut round and when you glue it back together you won't see that. I've also felt this didn't have enough text change in it so I've pulled some pieces of these different texts just to put over this to improve the look and I have a quote and that's as far as I've got. Let's start with is she actually going to go on the tag or the page? I think possibly the page although I may have to outline her because she's not going to stand out against that background or give her a different background. I also want to find the corner pocket which I have this I got this second hand, uh, someone selling on Facebook Marketplace. And this has a lot of florals in lots of different colours. I think maybe the pocket should be a bold colour. That makes zero sense to me. What about that way? Slightly better. I'm going to put this one down and her down. She goes over the top of that. I'm going to edge her on the back. So that's taking a black ink pad and then very, very gently going and round the edges of the fussy cut, but on the reverse to outline it a little better. The pocket is now quite narrow because she's stuck onto it. I need something thinner than this. Let's check this out. Yeah, that'll fit in. Tiniest little journaling card or a bookmark. Decoration wise, you don't have to do too much because it's not that big. I still want to put a little something on here because I like different colours and shades. You can trim off the excess and then decide how we're going to decorate it because this is just the base. Could add just some more florals. I've got a napkin tear out bits and attach it i could do a bit of a flower there and then maybe a bit of a flower there get the backing off there we go just going to use the prit stick normally i'd use a collage glue but i'm going for convenience i might add the glue up I'm going to trim that off immediately just so i can see where I'm at. And do we want more flowers or do we want to leave it at that? Come in there. Next thing would be to put a little bit of Mod Podge. A bit too much on that brush. Rubbing it so that I'm trying to not have too many brush marks on this. Leave that to dry. I decided more flowers might be a bit over the top because there's a lot of flowers. Therefore, I cut out a small figure from the 1950s and we'll put it on here and we'll probably outline her because I don't want to do much more layering but she does fade a bit into that bookmark. I'm not going to try and do all of these straight. It might be more fun and slightly more dynamic to do angles. Let's go around her. I want something pretty fine. I'm going to go around the whole of her. That is day eight. Florals. <laughs> Finished. When I do put the journal together, just so you're aware, I may not be putting them in the order they're here now. This is just for convenience. Day nine prompt is sepia. This is going to be slightly longer. I'm using this page, Life is in the Details, which I think was stickers, 
day four, I'm going to the inside of it to do the sepia prompt. I've printed up a picture from the internet, torn it out. I'm going to add this in the middle of the page using my Distress Collage Medium to glue it down. Go over the top and the edges with the medium. I will be doing this again later so it doesn't matter if there's a slight difference at the moment. The next stage that I'm going to do on this is I'm actually going to come in and put some detail back into this picture because where it was blown up on the internet it's lost a lot of detail, it's quite pixelated. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use probably a combination of watercolour pencils and watercolour crayons. So these large stained areas will be the crayons and the detail will be the pencils. This is a pinky shade and then come in and smudge it. They do smudge beautifully. And the nice thing about doing this is, yes, you're creating a bit of art, but you're following somebody else's drawing and colour palette. You could change the colour palette if you want. You don't have to stick to theirs. You can draw it yourself if you're capable. I'm not. As you can see, with the majority, I'm just going to smudge. Just get a little colour for this. I'm debating between the gold and a white. Don't think I've got anything quite light enough. I've got a yellowy tone. I'll just test it over here. That might work. And then where it's darker, I'm going to do the yellow. And then where it's lighter, I've got a white. And because they smudge in, they'll pick up the colours around them anyway. So that's what I'm doing on the main buildings. I know somewhere in here I have watercolour pencils, but I couldn't find them. What I do have is a Stabilo. It might actually, because the only colour I really need to go over is the black area with some detail. I think the Stabilo will work fine for that. If I want to smudge it down, I just get a bit of water on my finger, I think this time, possibly and pull it into that area to make that grey and when it's dry come back in. I don't think the original is particularly detailed so I think I can get away with that. And when you go back over this with glaze which I will be doing it will move this colour around a little bit because a glaze is wet and water colour crayons and pencils react to wet. If you're never sure about what you're doing just stand up and get a bit of distance and see if it's the effect you want because close up it's hard to tell but once you're at a distance you might have a better idea. I think I've shown you enough of that. The idea is to make these videos shorter without boring you silly by doing a whole process and you're just sitting there. Let me know if I'm shortening them too much in the comments below because I'm going to come back when this is good to go. I think what I'm going to do is sepia around these edges and then use clear Mod Podge over the rest of it. Originally I was going to sepia the whole lot but I don't think I will. But to sepia around the edges I'm getting a very very thin brush up to the edge and down and fade it. I will need to put Mod Podge over all of it because of it being watercolour crayon and we want to seal it in or you could use hairspray. That's such a lovely graduation of colour for the sepia. As this does feel a bit sticky, I am going to do the old talcum powder trick. and hopefully not change the colour too much. Vintage Photo Distress. Let's hope there's some colour in it. There appears to be. It's just hard work, this ink at the moment. I'm hoping to butt up to these edges and bring it out a bit. I want to go back round with the black on this edge where I had to cut 
background that fancy border this is the espresso and i'm going to come back and go through by this black border i do feel like i want to put a bit more white through maybe bring it down a bit towards this maybe i've faded this up too much let's grab some white i may even put a bit of the yellower watercolor crayon through here as well let's just see what we can do i'm not adding water to this at the moment i think possibly the only thing i need to do is find a goldeny color so i'm super fussy bring that down and into it and then the same here and then similar on this side so make this a bit more golden and what do i want to do about this white bit i feel like some things aren't really working on here but i don't know why It might just be that the black and the browns are too faded in comparison to the picture. I'm going to bring some water and see if I can get a bit more of a fade. Got some kitchen paper. Pull some of that colour up. And I've pulled a lot of the colour I've just put up on. But the only bit is I think I need a bit of white there. The main thing is that you can write on it, I suppose. Not that it becomes a major piece of art. Little dose of hairspray. It is sticky, so I will need to use a little bit of baby powder. It will change the colour of this. That may not necessarily be a bad thing. I'm not sure the black ink really shows up on that edge there. Grab that black ink and see if I can get a bit more onto this edge. See how fussy I am? I'm sure you're just as fussy. That's better. I don't think it's necessary to put words on all of them, but I did find Dance in the Rain. And to me, this does look like it's been raining need to find where I would want to put it. That bottom right hand corner is the best place for it. it finishes it off doesn't it? For pop of colour I found another image on the internet and printed it up on some very lightly coffee stained paper. I also took some script and printed it on the reverse. One thing I do want to do is fold that down so that becomes a pocket that's internal to the actual pages. A pop of colour to me is not a huge amount of colour, just a little highlight of colour. So I'm sticking within the brown colour ranges. I'm going to see if there's enough ink on the vintage photo to pull those edges in. My main aim with this is to follow the prompts but also have pages when the journal's finished that are non-prompt related. More pockets, more tucks, more flips. With the script on the reverse, I took the opac opacity, opacity down so that the script would print a bit lighter because I just felt if you did nothing else, you could write over that script quite easily. If it had printed up fully black, it would mean that page was then redundant or would need extra decoration to create journaling spaces. The paper is very thin and that print has come through. This page may have a big pocket, I may decorate it. When this becomes a pocket, this will need edging both sides as well. The female figure I've printed up is in brown because pop of colour means I want my colour to come from another item. I have, as described in previous videos, inked around the back. She's looking this way. I might put her that side. Yeah, that does make more sense from where her eye gaze is going. And then the pop of colour, really, really simple. Big sunflower behind her head, like it's a crown. A little unusual, I know, not traditional Italian at all. I'm going to get some gold leaf. This could be interesting. I've never tried painting shades 
with gold leaf before. I'm not going to have that much control of this, I don't think. I do have more sunflower pictures if I don't like this. Different gold. Even though I was trying to do more vintage, I was always going to end up putting some glitter and gold in it, wasn't I? Well, I wasn't intending to do that, but I think it'll make a lovely contrast with the browns. It's definitely not just a pop of colour, but a pop of shine. So that needs to go, just so I know roughly where well, I'm lining that up. Those can be rubbed off in a minute. Now, is that roughly where I want her? Completely daft. Definitely different. <laughs> well, it's still Italy. <laughs> just a bit different. <laughs> I don't know why that's making me laugh so much. Right, the next one is stamp it out. Oh, I'm going to have to have a think about this. I've got so many stamps. I've decided to work on a piece of ephemera. Because this has come from China, they've actually put two spaces where you would write your address. This would be the normal place to write an address. This would normally be where you wrote your postcard. And this would be the picture, or you would have your address on here, a message on here, and a picture on here. So, um, I think if we cover this bit, we make this bit the picture, that bit where the address goes. I'm going to cover this bit then with some, I think this one's tea stained paper. A couple of little prep things first. That's been covered. I've trimmed it off. I'm going to very briefly go down that edge with the sanding tool. This isn't as severe as the one that I used on a previous video will be to ink round it with a vintage photo. I haven't really got much of a plan for this stamp it up. I was given this tip months ago that when you stamp have a something thick but slightly bouncy below where you're stamping so you're not stamping immediately on a hard surface and your stamp should come out clearer. I have some script stamp here and I thought I could do that as just a might need to stick that on there a little bit better with a bit of water do that as a background and to do it as a background so it doesn't interfere too much I'm going to use a permanent I use memento but I'm going to use the London fog oh yeah the next thing I want to do is I want to put some Mod Podge over the top of this to protect that. I've cut this woman out and she is looking upwards. She's also wearing a nice green dress. That's decided me that I'm going to edge, I'm going to use my watercolour crayons again to edge with a green. Put a bit of water on here. I've never done that. I don't think I've done this before. I'm going to actually wet the pencil uh, crayon before I put it on. And I'm hoping that will give me a really soft effect. If it doesn't, then I'm wasting my time. I think I just need a bit more water to spread this one, if it will spread now, of course. Don't like it when I get lines. Mind you, she'll be covering that up, so that's okay. I'm going to put another coat on this. Then I'm going to do my usual buff with the finger. She's not really going to cover up that line, is she? Might have to do something about that in a minute. Ah. No, what I could do ah, is I could use a bit of this napkin, which is but the green and yellow bits, and go round that border again with bits of torn napkin. I know some people put glue on their finger to get this up. That doesn't seem to work for me. It's come up anyway. And what I might do is just try tearing it 
so that I don't get the bird or the plant in. I just want the green bits. I think that will cover up that line a bit. And I'll work my way round with some bits of green on here. So I need more collage medium. At least it's getting loads of layers of protection now. I just read the back of the, the Mod Podge and it says up to five layers and sanding in between. I'm not doing five layers and sanding in between. I don't know if I want that border on, so I'm going to try and get it off. Run that along the top, maybe. Could do it so that you see the edge of the postcard and those join. Do the tiniest bit of yellow to join those. I've got a yellow going into green. I have a bit double thickness, but I think I'll get away with it. While this is all having to dry, I'm going to put her down. Need to dry that off. I've still got a bit more fiddling to do. I've decided I'm going to rough up these edges a little bit. And then on the reverse, if any of that napkin has come over, which it has a little bit, I'm going to try and get that off. And I wasn't really happy. Well, I don't mind that bluey green. But with that very bright green over the top, it's looking maybe slightly too blue. I don't know. So I'm going to spray it and add some yellow. I'm still not getting rid of that line, am I? I'm going to keep trying. I don't know if that's achieved anything on that top edge. I was hoping it would take that liney look off and it's not really. I don't think anyone would notice it bar me. I'm going to give embossing a go. Hopefully this embossing pad will work. I was going to just go across. I'm only going to emboss in white. Throw the powder on. Okay, get that back into the pot. Let's just see. That appears to be everything melted. Don't know if you should do more of it and bring it down here. I'm actually pretty happy with that. It's unusual, but you've got two different styles of stamping and it was stamp it out. So I've fulfilled the brief on that one. The next prompt is quotes. I want to keep this journal interesting. It's quite diverse so far. So I'm going to do another piece of ephemera. I might glue this onto the page or stick it in a pocket. This I've taken from Melina. I think that's MS Scrapbuster. And she made these the other day and I like them, but her measurements didn't work for me. The idea is that you have two pieces of double-sided cardstock and you've cut them so that one will fit inside the other like that. They glue together. This ha get, has a catch and that when you open them up you have the journaling pages. Therefore you would decorate the outside. I'm going to give you the measurements and the score lines in both inches and centimetres. Let's call this piece piece A. So that will be the piece that comes over and has some kind of catch here. Piece A, 12 by 4, which in centimetres is 30 by 10. The scoring is not equal. You can see that base is longer than the two flaps. So for the scoring going left to right, the first score I did at three and three eighths of an inch or eight and a half centimeters and the second score from the left going all the way across was at eight and five eighths of an inch or 22 centimeters piece b which is the piece that goes this way much simpler this one i haven't measured these scores because i've measured this bit so i went 11 and a half so her original was 12 inches. I found that kind of folded in on itself and didn't sit properly. So I've gone for 11 and a half inches across and then five inches down and then just equally divided 
I recut it so a little bit came off one side to give you that lip, I suppose you would call that. So I equally divided them, but then cut this one, a slither off this one to give it that lip. I just preferred the look. I will put all those measurements in the description so you can pick them up from there. So just remember piece A is the bit that folds over, piece B is the bit that gets hidden. Now we just need to attach piece B to piece A. To sit nicely inside here. Pretty quick to put together. Now it's just decorate as you wish to decorate. I'm going to keep the quotes one fairly simple because the last few have been a little bit more detailed and the idea is that you can do these designs quickly. I'm going to put this on the front as the catch for that. So we're only going to glue to about here and I'm going to use a strong glue. These little petals may look great, but they can lift very easily. For the quote, I got two kits, both from eclecticpapercraftart.com. I'll put the details down below. One was travel quotes, and this one is Shakespeare quotes. The one I chose, while it doesn't really mean this, did give me a direction for the insert. So I chose our bodies, our gardens, to which our wills, our gardeners. And I thought, as I've got a floral, particularly sunflower theme coming through on these pages, that's a perfect excuse to put a sunflower with the quote. I'm going to stick this one on here to make part of the front cover. The other thing I want to do is put the another sunflower over this corner here, but so it doesn't cover up the actual quote. I will need to do some trimming up afterwards. I prepared some extras for the internal pages. Some strips of the paper the sunflowers were cut from, a couple more Shakespeare quotes from Eclectic Paper Craft Art, a couple of my 1950s women, some ephemera that I think I got from AliExpress, just some little bits of fake paper. I do have these sunflowers but I've also got to the side some a music script stamp in case I decide to use that instead of those little sunflowers. When collaging I tend to go for odd numbers e.g. three, five, seven. The simplest one is three and very very quick and easy to do. I'm doing five this time. The journaling is actually these internals this is your external pieces. I'm going to place the strip down the opening, then create a square shape with that in the background. We have the woman to sit over the joins, and we have a piece of Shakespeare quote which might go over the top there and potentially a sunflower or a bit of script depending on which I prefer somewhere on here probably a bit of script going over this. That's a very very quick simple collage design to lightly stamp over hold it in place. There we go just very very lightly done adds a little bit of interest without being overly dramatic. I've done my usual ink black around the edges and try and catch any white pieces. I have to be careful because I've also cut through various limbs to do the fossy cutting, which is fine when you're using a wet glue, but with a Pritt stick it tends to rip up the body a little bit. I want her to go over some of these joins Bring that arm back down to where it should be. Let me be that I am and seek not to alter me. The opening's here. Similar idea. A strip down here. One of these. I'm 
And then that is day 12. I've been struggling with the concept of dreamy. I eventually decided to keep it really, really simple. I've printed up a marble design on some coffee stained paper, which I think is quite a dreamy background. And then I found this lace, which I think is very romantic and dreamy. And I thought I would simply add the lace somewhere on here, um, maybe as a border, and that creates a dreamy page. Smudging that glue over the remaining outer edge of that border. This will flap about once in a journal, but I think that's actually quite a nice effect. And of course you can write on this page, you simply flip the lace up. That is my interpretation of Dreamy. Before I do day 14 and the last in this video, which is tickets and tags, I need to strengthen this piece of paper. It's only copy paper as is this and it's now got this heavy lace on it. I'm going to glue this into here. I think I may edge that as well. I'm deciding whether I want to edge that in a pinky colour or the vintage. For a change I'm going to go with the pink. I don't know if you can see that pink edging. It's very subtle. Let me put it against that. Yeah, you can see it there just a little bit. I'll continue to do that and use a Pritt stick to glue this to here, smooth it all down, let it dry off, and then we will continue. Let's look at what we have here. Um, this has now dried and it's nice and thick. This is the tag that was in a swap box from India. Thank you for that tag, it's lovely. I've taken one of the quotes from Eclectic Papercraft Arts, same place I got the Shakespeare quotes, and I've torn it down to fit that tag. I'm going to do a very simple collage on this tag. It also was tickets, and I've got little bits and big bits. So here, I think we just want something little. We have this sort of thing, but I want something preferably Maybe if we do that one as a background, that one. Too much writing maybe, that's, I'm not entirely sure of the, no. Ah, that works better, putting a circle there. Okay, that's the three pieces on that collage for a very simple little collage on that tag. Here's our little tag done. Bits that I did off camera is edge this with vintage photo, do the back of the sunflower in black, that's doing that on the back of that sunflower, edged this background paper in black and then go round the ticket in vintage photo, which only really shows on that lighter edge, but makes that a bit more coordinated. I really Think that little tag's quite sweet actually. It needs something to sit in, so I have these new, just purchased them, glassine bags, which everyone's crazy about at the moment. And I thought we could decorate this with the second prompt, which is ticket. And I do have large tickets. I think because I would still like to put one of the women on. I need something that goes, is square or goes across. And then I will need something behind here. Either another sunflower, which you could do. I've got a second one of those little ones. You do want it to still be see-through, so I think that might actually work. That will need to be held down a little bit until it takes. I'm going to run her along that edge. I'm wondering if I've got some glue dots that might work better. I'm not a big fan of these tape glue dots because 
I seem to ruin the tape pretty quickly and then it's you can't get to them and it's a bit of a waste of money but they might be perfect for these bags yeah I think that might actually work far better okay there we go learn something new glue dots for glassine bags I think I'm going to glue the bag onto here to leave that shoulder going over I'm not going to have the bag removable it's going to be a pocket on the page into those lines there now we've discovered the joy of glue dots and glue dot up the back i don't know if these are going to show through on the glassine or not but i've put so many on that it will just look like a pattern i'm actually really happy with that nice and simple but effective and covers the brief that's day eight to day 14. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It does help other people see it on YouTube. If you're not already, please consider subscribing. I do do a variety of different things from modern day planning, art journaling, journal inspiration, as in wording and what to write in a journal, junk journals, ephemera making, and anything else that takes my fancy. Let me know what you think of these seven days in the comments below and I will see you next time.